I was asked to kind of reflect on our first 20 years and think about, so what are the lessons learned? And let me say, uh, it's not always been a straight path. We've tried many things and I came up with my top 10, okay? The first one is the value is huge. Oh, it's up there now. Better decisions, better lives. And uh, they're more and more, the kids are talking about, this is a superpower, okay? They talk about getting superpowers and decision skills are a superpower. And that's lesson one. The value is huge. And in fact, it's not hard to get across to people. People get it pretty quickly that if you could make significantly better decisions, that would have huge value. Uh, I love the email we got from a mother that said, thank you for teaching my son decision skills. He's already come home and used them against me. Uh, I normally would have said no to what his proposal was, and he showed me that his proposal had decision quality. Thank you for teaching my son with a smiley face, okay? Now I read that to kids and I say, you wanna influence your parents and get their agreement? And, and Ralph, you made the same point with your son. Have the superpower to change your parents' mind. That gives you power. And I read that to parents and I say, what do you want more in your relationship with your children than them making good decisions and you believing they made good. There isn't anything bigger. This is huge. And the, the relationship between adults and youth is so broken in so many places and the kids feel victimless, feel a victim state because they don't have choices to make, okay? they feel like all the choices are being made for them. Then they come to one of those classes and they're told, we're gonna to teach you decision skills. And they say, well, I don't have any decision. Well, no, you're going to high school. You've got all these decisions to make. And we had the middle school teachers tell the high school teachers, this next group is gonna be the worst you've seen in decades. And the high school teachers, after the kids had decision education, said there's nothing wrong with these kids. Why? Because it was transformational. They started feeling in charge of their lives and not victims of adult decision making. So it's huge. This is, the, the value is huge and it's easy to convince people. The next lesson, it's not being taught. Even, even the teachers don't know, okay? They, they wouldn't know how to teach it because it's not in the system. It's a graduate school course at Stanford, okay? I mean, it just isn't available. And so it's a huge hole in our education. And the third one is it's non-intuitive. People still think the way you get to be a good decision maker is by having many bad decisions and learning from experience. Maybe some of them think a little bigger. I'll look at other people's bad experiences. But they don't know that there's actually a science and a foundation and a way you can rigorously think and it combines creativity for generating more opportunities and it creates rigor in thinking, critical thinking, and the third is social, emotional, and psychology, and communication to be able, because very seldom do you make decisions alone. So it's not intuitive, and it's a missionary sale, therefore. Okay, that means people don't know that they're missing it. Because people don't know they're missing it, you can't ask them, what do you want? So invariably, we've had people try to take this and make it more customer friendly. Let's just ask everybody what they want. And what you come back with is a very diluted form of, of something that people think they might want for making better decisions. When we have the normative prescriptive 
foundation of what it takes to make a good choice, and that's what we have to build on. So this is like algebra. I'm sure they didn't, if you had interviewed people and say, do you want algebra? They would have said, what are you talking about? Okay, and to make it ubiquitous, it's a missionary sale. That's the biggest challenge we have. The concepts and skills are teachable. We've, we know that, and it, they're teachable at that level of, we found the sweet spot between seventh and 12th grade. I'm glad they're trying out in, I think it's Junction City, the sixth grade, and so on. But it, there's a sweet spot. I also wrote a little book at one time, Aldi Locks meets Desidero, where I teach six-year-olds, okay? So I really believe that it should integrate into learning all the way through if we can actually get it there. But our lesson is that's the sweet spot and we should go there. Our curriculum is really good and unique and it can get much better with storytelling and digital storytelling and getting it across. But we're pretty good at knowing what we need to teach and it's inherently cross-disciplinary, okay? So it's not, it doesn't fit into the verticals that are in academia or in, in our whole academic disciplines. So since it doesn't fit into the verticals, it has to go and fit across in some way, okay? And not an easy place to do that in the school system. The behavioral decision science have become very popular. They're mostly taught to manipulate people as opposed to helping people make better choices. And, and therefore, I think for us, the behavioral decision sciences are hugely important to inoculate the kids to recognize when they're being manipulated by somebody using conformity, ev confirmatory evidence bias and what, you know, all the different things that we do with media now to really manipulate people's thinking. And decision education for youth uh, <laughs> requires more than what we've done in the business world. We started out in year 2001, 20 years ago, kind of converting what we knew for the business world and saying, hey, this should really work for everybody. Uh, and what we found is, no, you need head and heart. You need, you need additional topics like decision fitness and, and just the whole self-control concept that I have a choice and that I can stop and think. All those kinds of things are really deep and important when we teach it. So it's not just the don't just think we can take the business stuff and take it over here and it'll work, okay? Number six, uh, it requires deep and repeated exposure. And I, I say deep, for us it's really not deep, but it's like that 25 hour to, 25 hour to 50 hour level upfront rubric, and then it can work in all kinds of other areas. And there have been all these temptations to just do the DQ light. I think DQ light is very popular. It's very easy to get enthusiasm in, in a matter of a two and a half hour uh, experiential thing. And it doesn't mean that people after that will apply it. So it's okay to use that as a starting point to get people excited about learning more. But I don't want it to stop there. It doesn't get us, uh, it's like, the first two and a half hours of algebra, I bet you you could show some fancy things to somebody and saying how valuable this is. But I don't think it substitutes for a class. And our vision is to stick with and make sure we've got the full thing, and full is not the full graduate course. You can study this on for your life, but it's, it's the whole subject and uh, mean, I, I think what Chris called that strong start program is a pretty good core and teachers can build all kinds of other things around it, okay? That's, and that's a 25 hour session. So number seven, uh, the educational system is structured, I, I would almost say against it. We have a system 
that forces the integration of learning onto the student and is never experienced much in the school system. So when you're in the vertical that are the creative stuff, you're in the creative world. When you're in the, create, when you're in the analytical world, you're in the analytical world. And decisions will require creativity and rigorous thinking and social emotional topics. And you don't know ahead of time which of those will become most important in this particular decision. So you have to have access to the full topic and be able to integrate it. And that is a hard thing to teach and the system is aligned against it. So getting it into the system is, is a challenge. The best place we found is that actually these full courses, life skill courses, or something up front where they get the rubric, and then what I heard Brett say, it's beautiful because you can reinforce it in almost every vertical subject. Every vertical subject, you, and I, I, when I listen to him, I say, yeah, absolutely, but get them the rubric, get them the framework so they get that basis. Number eight, Adoption is challenging for schools. Schools are overloaded, oversubscribed, as you called it. That's, it's tough stuff. And we have to find a way to align this enough, and Chris has been a master at this, of, of really understanding teachers and schools. That's probably his best skill. Kind of going along and understanding and empathizing and getting it into the system where it helps them. And because they do have problems to solve. Like in, in Oregon, there is this uh, money for uh, high school success. And ninth grade success is the greatest indicator to high school success. So this stuff is flowing into ninth grade success because it is the most powerful thing to get them thinking about the full thing. So how do you align with the system and make it valuable to the way they have to go because they've got tough jobs in schools, okay? This, they have to serve many stakeholders and they're all overloaded. And <clears throat> number nine, we can scale what we call the train the trainer model. The, the current 25 hour strong start course is being taught to teachers to deliver in just three days of training. And in that three days of training, for two days, they take high school seniors and make them teaching assistants so that they work with the incoming freshmen. And so around every table of five, there's one senior and they can relate to the seniors. That's, that's kind of the, the, the top level of what they're looking for. And the seniors are taught for two days and the teachers are taught for three days and they already can deliver a five-day course. Why? Because DEF has created the kind of programmatic videos and materials that allow the teachers to have what we call a flipped classroom, okay? They, they don't have to be uh, that skilled in the topic deeply. They get that on the videos and in the soft materials, and then they really manage the whole process of, the, of engagement and so on, and it really works well. Number 10, online courses and resources are very powerful. They don't just stand alone, but we've reached a lot with MOOCs and so on, and we need a blended combination of empowering teachers with having that material, and we need to also make it spread out so both of those are needed. And finally, I've concluded that this is a long-term thing. I'm, I'm, I wish it were fast, but given what I've just said, I see it, it's gonna take another 20 years, or maybe longer, and for that reason, I am personally, uh, I'm not gonna see the end of this in my lifetime, uh, but we're going to try to create an endowment and get this started and pay forward. I can't think of anything we can give to the future that would have a bigger value impact than having people think straight about highly conflictual situations and making good decisions. 
So that's kind of what I came out of with this. Thank you.